Greetings, Father Bill here to give a teaching on the, the sacred triduum. And it is, as I do this, it is Holy Week, Monday of Holy Week. And um, I want to offer this as a teaching to help you enter into this most sacred time. Holy Week, what does that mean to you? What, is, what has it meant to you over the years? I know here usually families are lying around on the gym floor right outside the door where I'm standing here. And, and they're, they're putting sawdust on the, on the ground and making it look beautiful. Sawdust rugs. Um, the chrism mass is usually on Tuesday evening and we have people who go and go to the cathedral and are part of the chrism mass where all the oils are blessed to be given out um, throughout the diocese for the use in the sacraments and baptisms and confirmations and anointings of the sick. Um, and then we get to the end of the week where the celebrations begin on Thursday night. We call it the the sacred triduum, the paschal triduum, the three days, and um, starts on Thursday evening. And so Lent ends, and then that, this begins the sacred triduum. These three days, they go from Thursday and end Sunday night. How, how do we enter into that? And uh, I've always tried to help people throughout the years to think of these days as something that need to be different, to be lived differently, um, that they, they shouldn't be just like any other week's end. Um, I've encouraged people to, uh, to try to get off work and to create space, to create silence in their, in their time. It's the most important time for us to reflect upon the mystery of our redemption and to receive the grace of our redemption. So um, I continue to encourage you. Well, this year unlike, is unlike any other year that we've had in our experience uh, for Holy Week. And so I imagine that it's not too hard for many of you to be off work right now, whether that's uh, difficult for you or, or, or things are okay. Uh, at least I believe more people have some time to, to focus in. Um, we still need to be deliberate about these days, even though we won't be gathering here at church. Uh, we will be streaming everything. Um, it is um, important for us to be deliberate about living these days. Um, and I want to help you think about how to do that uh, and to live this sacred triduum this year. What we celebrate in this time is what we call the Paschal Mystery. It's the Passover Mystery. Now we've heard of Passover. We know that the Israelites, the Jewish, our Jewish brothers and sisters, are celebrating this week the Passover uh, from slavery to freedom, the Israelites leaving Egypt and, and moving into freedom. They moved from being no people to being God's people. Today, in this week, we celebrate Jesus' passing over from death to life, from suffering to glory. So, what are you passing over to? What are you passing over from? What am I passing over from? That's the question we need to ask. What is the slavery in your life? these days? Where are you bound up? Where do you lack the freedom um, for joy? Where do you lack the freedom for hope? What sin, what resentment, what um, addiction is, is holding you bound? The risen Lord, from His place at the right hand of the Father, is inviting you and me to follow Him into these days to embrace the mystery of His saving cross and to know the newness of life. To allow our slaveries, our bondage, to be set free by His mercy, shown perfectly on the cross and vindicated in the resurrection. So this week, we celebrate the Paschal Triduum. It's not just uh, so much remembering of the life of Christ and His resurrection, His suffering. It was, it's it's our being enveloped into that mystery um, and receiving the mercy as it's poured out. We are not meant to live these days as days for looking back, for looking back on, on what happened in Jesus' life. While we do look back with awe and wonder at what Jesus did for us in love, we are meant to live these days aware of what Jesus did and remembering what Jesus did, but recognizing this mystery now present 
for ourselves in our lives here and now, touched by it now so that we can be set free for a future of hope, for a future of, of joy, for a future of glory. And that future begins now. We as Catholics have the gift of a liturgical year. We are a liturgical church and so we use symbol, we use smells and bells and music and everything to celebrate our, these mysteries of our faith. And as we, as we celebrate, we, we can enter into the depth of these mysteries and all of it helps us. We have a liturgical year in our celebrations. That's what this is here. It's this strange looking circular graph thing is actually a liturgical calendar. And the liturgical year starts with Advent and we can see the color purple here. And these are the weeks one, two, three, four of Advent leading into Christmas and the, the, the Christmas season. Each one of these spokes is a week. It's a week of, of the year. And, and so the numbers out here, one, two, three, four, are the numbers of the week in the year, four weeks of Advent. Here we have the Christmas season. Then we start with the weeks of ordinary time, and then that's leading us up to Lent. And we find ourselves now here in Lent on Monday of Holy Week. And then that leads us into the sacred triduum, which is in red. And then we have this Easter season, which goes on for 50 days, then we find ourselves back in ordinary time throughout the summer, leading into the fall, and then we'll get a new liturgical calendar, which will have the new dates on it. But it's the same look because we, we have another chance to celebrate the mysteries of Advent and Christmas. We have another chance to, to listen to the readings and the lessons of ordinary time, and then to come into Lent and live it. Who would have thought that our Lent this year, 2020, was going to be like it is? No one would have imagined this. And so we're living Lent now. And then what does it mean this year for us to experience new hope and new, new life? Um, it's, it's always and forever young and forever new. And so this, is the, this reminds us that it's a cycle. And we always come back around to celebrate. We are coming up now on the, other, on the, newest oppor- the new opportunity for us to um, reflect on the mysteries, uh, the most profound mysteries of our salvation. And so... When we look at the triduum, triduum, it's Latin for three days, triduum. And um, so it's the three days. It's the most solemn, sacred days. And we, what we do is very uh, um, impactful. We remember the history, but we celebrate the mystery. Remember the history, but celebrate the mystery. The history, of course, is back in history. But the mystery of those events is current. It is now, and it leads us into our future. And so um, as we come, what we do in the Triduum is we recognize the covenant, the new covenant in the blood of Christ, and we celebrate that on, on Holy Thursday as Jesus announces that and invites us to receive his life in the Eucharist and reminds us that that Eucharist fits us, strengthens us, equips us to serve in his spirit. And so normally we have the foot washing on Holy Thursday. It's a reminder of what it means to be a Eucharistic people, that we are servants of one another. And and then entering with that covenant, that promise, that relationship that we will always have his life within us, we move into Good Friday, the celebration of Good Friday, and we recognize the suffering. We recognize the dying, the cross, the total surrender of Jesus our Lord. And, and then we wait. He's, he's died on the cross. He's placed in the tomb. And then we wait. And Holy Saturday, the rest of Good Friday and Holy Saturday, is a time of waiting. And that waiting is not just, you know, impatient waiting. It's the waiting. It's, it's, it's a pregnant waiting. It's like a pregnancy where you know you're waiting for this new life to come. And so that's the kind of waiting that we have there. And during that time, we have what's called the Paschal Fast. And so it's not a fasting of repentance, but it's a fasting of preparation for the banquet. It's of of waiting for the birth of this new mystery, this new life. And so um, 
we go through Saturday, we're waiting, and then normally we would celebrate in the evening. We would gather for the, the uh, Easter vigil where we, where we hear the readings. We, it's, a, it's, it's a very Passover celebration because we start in darkness and we pass over into light from chaos to order. And then we hear the stories from the, the uh, Hebrew scriptures, the Old Testament, which speak of, of the promise, which speak of God's faithfulness and the people's unfaithfulness, but God continuing to call them back, God redeeming, God reestablishing, God who's constantly wounded by his, his unfaithful people, continuing to choose us for love. And then it leads to the proclamation of the resurrection and new life. And, and so we, we proclaim his, his dying and his rising, just like at every mass we, mass. we proclaim your death, we proclaim your resurrection until you come again. And so then, then we go to bed late on Saturday night after a wonderful celebration. We have done baptisms and confirmations and first communions, and we've all been soaked with renewing our, our baptismal promises. Things we're going to miss this year, but we will connect to in our hearts. Um, but we, um, we, then, we then go to sleep, sleep a little bit. We come back on Sunday. Now, Sunday is always good because a lot of people come who may not usually be here and uh, haven't had all of this kind of preparation, but they come because it's Easter. And there's something in them, even if they don't come always to Mass, there's something in them that says it's somehow important to be there at least on this day. And instead of criticizing that, we need to celebrate that and receive these folks. And so part of what happens on Sunday is for all who come, we, we remember what happened. We tell them about what happened on Saturday night. We were, we, we talk about how, how what has been proclaimed and how we've come to recognize him in the spirit which has been poured out upon the newly baptized and upon all of us. And so it becomes truly the proclamation of good news. Not just that he has risen, not just that Jesus rose from the dead, but in the present tense that he is risen and we have seen him. And this is what we need to prepare ourselves for. Not just to remember, but to see him now, to recognize him now. And so I'd like to just show you, uh, kind of walk through this time and talk maybe about how we might be able to best live these days. So first of all, I said it was the, the, the Paschal Triduum. Triduum, three days. So the three days would be, start with, right, Holy Thursday. So... Holy Thursday. I hope you can read my board here. Holy Thursday. The next day, of course, would be Good Friday. Then, of course, we have Holy Saturday. And we have Easter Sunday. Now, some of you might be sitting out there saying, Father, you just said it was three days, and you just wrote four days up there. What's going on? Can't you count? Well, we recognize that uh, it, it is four days listed. But when you're a Hebrew person back in, in their time, you would count the day. And in fact, the Jewish people still today, when they start their celebration of, of, the, uh, of the Saturday, of the Sabbath, it begins on Friday at sunset. So all of the rules of the Sabbath begin on Friday as the sun is setting. And so then they celebrate through the next day, through Saturday until sun sets. So a day is from sunset to sunset. So if we do this, then on Holy Thursday, it's actually Lent all the way up until sunset till sunset on Thursday. And then after sunset starts the Triduum. So it goes from from 
the evening down and then all day Friday. So from the evening of Thursday to the evening of Friday is one day. The evening of Friday to the evening of Saturday is two days. The evening of Saturday to the evening of Sunday is three days, the triduum. So the, the triduum actually ends uh, on the evening with sunset on, on Sunday of the resurrection. So if this is sunset, then we start in the evening. And what we have is we gather. We um, truly gather to, uh, to be the body of Christ. We come together for the Mass of the Lord's Supper. So, Mass of the Lord's Supper. We celebrate this together, and um, we have the focus on the Eucharist, We hear, the, we hear about the, the Lord's Last Supper where he instituted the Eucharist. And we have the foot washing which interprets for us the significance of being the body of Christ, that we are servants of one another. We also receive the oils that are brought from the chrism mass from the diocese so that we can use them throughout the year to nourish and heal and commission the body of Christ in the sacraments. So at this mass, we're focused on the Eucharist, but, it's, it's, but we are standing in the shadow of the cross. We know where we're going. We know that on Good Friday, we are going to be focused on the cross and on the passion. And so in the shadow of the cross, recognizing that we live in a world where violence and death seeks to grab us and pull us down, we celebrate this new covenant in the blood of Christ and, and we receive him, his promise, his covenant with us that he will sustain us, he will be our strength, he will be our food. And so we dare to move forward, we dare to walk forward. We're called to be the community of faith, the body of Christ together to serve according to the mission that Jesus came with, to reconcile all things, all peoples, all of creation to the Father. What happens then down here on, on this evening is the Paschal fast begins. Paschal fast. Now the Paschal, remember that word means Passover. It means the, the passing over to the new thing, from the old thing to the new thing. Um, for us, it's, it's a passing over for, for, from sin to reconciliation, from despair to hope, from all that, that, that we, has held us bound to the freedom and the joy that the Lord gives us through his sacraments and by his dying and rising. And so this fasting is different than a Lenten, different than a Lenten fasting. This fasting, which happens right here in this little time of the Triduum, is about preparation for the banquet. If you're going to a big wedding banquet and you know the food is going to be wonderful, you don't stop at the drive through at Burger King along the way to the banquet. You leave yourself hungry so that when you get there, you'll be able to partake and enjoy every, everything that, that the banquet brings. And so we too are in the situation where we're, we're, waiting, we're waiting the banquet. We allow ourselves to feel some hunger so that we realize what our deepest longing is for. So when we go to, when we go to sleep, when we leave the Mass on, on Holy Thursday, usually we have a silent procession we spend time before the Eucharist. It's more of a quieting down time and entering into the, the, the Friday focus. And, um, and I keep saying we usually because this year is going to be strange, but we'll get to that. So um, Good Friday then. Um, pick a color here. Pick a color. We're going to use blue, I guess, for Good Friday. Um, so Good Friday, um, we, it's 3 o'clock is the time that we have the, the service of the Passion, the celebration of the Passion. Of our, 
our Lord. Now, it is not a Mass. This is the one day of the year where there is nowhere in the world a Mass. We do offer communion in that service, but it's from the celebration of Thursday, the Mass of the Lord's Supper. So, so here at this celebration, it is a service. It's not a, a, a Eucharistic liturgy. And it is for focusing on the mystery of the cross of Jesus Christ. And so we know. We know the story. We know his love. We know what it cost him to love us. And, and his yes to, to the call to love us, no matter what it cost. Um, this service normally would involve a prostration where we lay down before him in, in, a, in the posture of, of, of humility. And, um, and then we, we say yes to the Lord. We open ourselves to the mystery. We hear the passion proclaimed, the passion of our Lord. Then we have time for veneration of the cross. People coming forward while we sing without music. We just sing songs remembering the mystery as people profess, process forward and, and kiss the cross of Christ present in our midst. The wood of the cross is the symbol. And so there's the, the veneration of that mystery. Then there are intercessions. They will go longer. The, the deacon and the priest go back and forth and we pray very deliberately with the whole church for, for different petitions, intercessions, and um, calling all to this mystery, praying for all people. And, and then there is um, silence. We end in silence. Now what you'll notice is when we, or I'd ask you to notice, is when we start on Thursday, we start like any other Mass. We start with an opening hymn, we walk in, I do the greeting, and I, well, I don't, that's at the end. I do the greeting, and we make the sign of the cross, and, and we begin a Mass. At the end of this Mass, there is not the normal blessing and sending forth. This Mass ends a little bit awkwardly with just silence. There's a prayer over the people, and then we're done, and we go forth. Because the celebration of the Triduum is three days, but it's one celebration. So that's why it's not really appropriate to just pick what part of this you want to say, be at. Say, well, I really like Good Friday, so I'm going to do Good Friday, and then I'll be there on Sunday. Now, that's better than nothing, of course. But... If you want to really live these days, you need to live each moment. And um, whether you're doing that here in a big group or whether you're at home watching it on Facebook, we're called to live this time. So we come together, we have the Mass. The Mass ends without a uh, final sending forth because we're still now in the midst of a celebration. When we come together for this celebration on Friday, we don't start with a sign of the cross and uh, the Lord be with you. We, we just start with a prayer because we have already begun. We began way back here. So here we continue forth and when we get through the end of this celebration, we don't have a final blessing sending forth, go in peace, because we're not done. This is in the middle. This is like the middle of the sandwich and so, so then, you know, we go forth, and we go forth continuing to, to um, vigil, to, to wait. Our waiting starts. He's been placed in the tomb. Now we're waiting for, for what does this mean for us? And that's the question. What does this mean for me? What does this mean for us that Jesus has done this? And how does this touch me now? What needs to go into the tomb with him? in my life so that it can raise up? What am I willing to let go of to turn it over, to let him take on the cross with himself so that we can be set free? This is the question. And so this day is solemn. Some people feel emotion when they go through the, the passion, but it's not sad. It's not a sad day. We don't pretend like we don't know what happens. We know. So it's quiet. It's meant to be prayerful. We are in the Paschal fast, so I encourage you to make that obvious. Maybe unplug the television. Maybe limit your screen time. Obviously, we need to use our screens for being a part of the service this year. 
Um, if you're going to use screen time, maybe make it relevant to what we're reflecting on, whether you used some, some uh, program that's on formed and you're watching some sort of program reflecting on, on the mystery of, of the, the cross. Um, it's a day of gratitude for we recognize that all of this was an act of love for us. And it's a day of surrender, of, of turning over in ourselves whatever needs to be set free. Um, a day of quiet, a day of pondering, a day of waiting. So the day goes on. Then, Holy Saturday, you wake up in the morning. There's probably things that families do for getting ready for the, the Easter celebration. I would encourage you to do that in a way, if you can't, if you've got to clean the house, clean the house back here before Thursday. And be ready just to live these days. But if there's stuff that you need to do, obviously maybe some food preparation needs to happen, uh, things like that. Can you do that in a way that helps you to remember, different than normal, that helps you to remember what we're reflecting on and what we're waiting for? So Saturday is, is um, a day of, of waiting. Let me put this up here so that you can see this. Um, so this is Holy Thursday is, we'll say, the gathering. It gathers us as the body of Christ for the, the, the triduum. Here we celebrate and we reflect upon the dying. There is no rising without dying. Holy Saturday, let's call this the waiting. But again, remember, this is pregnant waiting, not impatient waiting. And then, of course, Easter Sunday will be the rising. And you say, but on Saturday night, you're already proclaiming the resurrection, but remember... When is Saturday night? Saturday night is after sunset. So it's actually part of Sunday. Um, so, okay, here we are. We're on Holy Saturday. You wake up on Saturday morning. And um, let's see. We're going to go black on this. We wake up on Saturday morning. What do you do? Recall the day before. Recall what you've done. Perhaps after the celebration in the afternoon, you, you chose to be fasting in the evening or maybe just had a snack or a small meal if you haven't eaten. This is the one day along with the second day, Ash Wednesday and then Good Friday are mandated days of fasting. One, one meal and then two other snacks, another meal. Unless, of course, you've aged out of this your infirmity, your sickness makes you have to eat. That is scrupulous about this, but it's the spirit of the day. So if you're fasting here and you, um, you maybe are praying the rosary or some sort of devotion on your own, maybe you reflect on the stations of the cross. With the media now, you can find versions of the stations of the cross to reflect upon. Um, but you go to bed with reflecting on this. When you wake up in the morning then, you're, you're, you're waiting for the fruits of this because when we celebrate the Paschal Mystery, we don't just celebrate what happened. We celebrate what happened, what Christ did for us, but also what it means to us now. And so what we're waiting is for, not just so that we can see if Jesus rises this year. We know that he rises. He, he rose, he is risen. But what we're waiting for is the fruits in our lives to be revealed. And so we, we, we prepare ourselves for that. We, we are trusting we are hoping. We are continuing to open ourselves. We have anticipation. Um, for a normal year, when we would have baptisms uh, you know, happening in the evening, there would be great anticipation on the part of them and upon the, their families and, and those who've worked with them for the sacraments of initiation. Um, this is a day to reflect upon the mysteries of baptism, of um, the dying and rising to new life. You and I were baptized, and our baptism has brought us into this mystery, and this mystery is now active in us. What does that mean? How are you living your baptism? Um, 
This is a day where we reflect upon how this dying means that we need to die to our old self so that we can rise. This is the time in the tomb. So, um, Jesus is in the tomb. But so is what we have allowed him to take there. What in our life has held us bound? It's in the tomb, and we're waiting for the Lord to reveal the new thing to us. Um, and then we come to the evening. So live this day mindfully. Live this day in a way which is uh, reflective, which remembers what we're doing. Then we come to the evening, and we have the Easter Vigil. The Easter Vigil celebration is the, that celebration which, which celebrates um, the rising. Now the rising, actually, I'm going to put a little, little mark here because i um, put this because it actually starts here on Saturday night. Um, so at this celebration, we move from chaos to order from darkness to light. Usually we're starting out in the back of the building with a fire in the darkness. We bring out the Paschal candle, we bless the fire, we light the candle, we process in, we present the light, the light of Christ, and everyone proclaims it. And then uh, we, we sing the great exaltet, which proclaims this light piercing the darkness, the light that, that is shared but not dimmed. We, we pray for the, we, we celebrate this, uh, the effect of this new thing that has happened, the light that has come into the world. It is our moving from slavery to freedom. As I mentioned, we hear these readings which tell the story of God's faithfulness to us. And then we celebrate uh, the rising of Christ. And um, we announce it, we proclaim it. The Alleluia comes out again. And so finally we get to sing. Alleluia. And, um, and the Paschal fasting ends. Now I recommend when we have a big long Easter vigil that people eat beforehand so they don't pass out during it. This year you'll be home. Preferably I recommend the same thing. Instead of sitting there with a pizza while you're celebrating, I would focus right in on this and and, and really focus on the readings. You will hear all of the readings this year. There won't be initiation sacraments this year, but uh, the readings will be all there, the proclamation of the resurrection. You'll have a chance to renew your baptismal promises. I invite you maybe to place a bowl of water on your prayer altar wherever you put your laptop or your computer and then have some, some uh, prayer setting there, maybe a candle, and, um, as, and you can light that candle as, as we... Are singing the when we're about to sing the exaltet, you can have that candle lit as a sign of the light of Christ, and um, and then um, what was I going to just say? Oh, have a bowl of water. Have a bowl of water there, and then when it's time to renew baptismal promises, you can dip your hand in and make the sign of the cross um, when it comes time. And uh, so there's there's ways to live this even at home. Here's the great proclamation. The new thing is for us. The, the rising of Christ, the empty tomb, is when we go and we look back at those things in our life that have held us bound, the things we've felt shame for. We allow the Lord to, to set us free, and we go back and we can look at those things, but there's no more. We're, we're not bound by them anymore. The story of our life no longer is a liability. It doesn't hold us down, but it becomes the opportunity for us to learn and receive grace and to be able to bring good news to others. If you have been down and have been lifted up, if you have felt dead and have been raised, if you were enslaved by something and you're set free, you've got good news to share. And so this is, this is what we come to celebrate here. Then on Sunday morning, the, the rising, uh, the celebration, the announcement of the rising uh, is, is what we're doing. So let's see. All right.
So we're announcing the, the resurrection and we celebrate Easter Mass. Um, we're celebrating the new sunrise. We're celebrating um, the good news. And so as I mentioned, the people who come, we're announcing this has begun. Last night it began. Here we announce it. Receive this good news. We, um, we receive that good news. We see it connecting to our story that our story is part of the great story of salvation. And then at the end of Mass, as always, we are sent. We are sent forth. We are sent with good news. Because people need the good news. Um, then we move into the 50 days of Easter. And the time from here on is, in, as in Luke's gospel, the, the disciples have this time of trying to figure out, what does this resurrection mean? What does it mean to have died and, and lost what we imagined our future would be, and, and now to live in this new reality? And so we in our own lives during the Easter season then go on and we, re, we continue to reflect. We continue to proclaim the resurrection. We, we, we focus on what does it mean now? How am I, how is this different than before? Uh, the shame that I've felt, if I still feel it, why, what do I do with that now? When I know I'm not, I don't, I'm not meant to be carrying that in the same way. How do I, how do I continue to turn that over? How do I live this new reality? And then that leads us all the way out to ascension of our Lord, where they had to let him go again as he had reappeared with them. But now he was ascending to heaven and the poor disciples had to try to understand now we're losing him again. But, uh, but Jesus says, wait, because my spirit comes upon you. Then you'll get it. Then you'll understand. And you are sent, he tells them, to the corners of the world with good news. And so then on Pentecost, nine days later after after the ascension. Nine days. Nine. Novena. Nine days. That's where novenas come from. Is that time of praying and waiting between ascension and Pentecost. And then uh, at Pentecost, the Spirit comes down upon them so that they can live this new life. So here in the Triduum is where we, we focus on this. All of the mystery is contained in this celebration. Enter into it. And then we have time together to continue to apply this in our lives. In fact, we have every year we continue to apply this mystery in our lives. The mystery of incarnation, the mystery of the life and, and ministry of Christ, the mystery of his dying and rising, and then all of his preaching and all of his miracles and all of his choosing us. And we continue to have the opportunity to every year to go deeper and deeper into this mystery. So I invite you, enter into these days. Um, I will be praying for you. The whole pastoral staff is praying for you. Together, let us enter into this. Um, look on the website for the times and, and details of the celebrations. Join us as we live stream each celebration. 7 p.m. on Thursday, 3 p.m. on Friday. 8.30 p.m., and that's a, there's, there was a misprint in the uh, bulletin. It's not 9, it's 8.30 p.m. this year uh, for the Easter Vigil. And then the same times, 9.30 and 11.30 on Sunday. God bless you, and God bless your family.